Happy Thursday to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. It's that time of the afternoon. Time to see what's happening in the tropics. It has been a very busy week out there across the tropics, especially in the Atlantic. So I want to update you on not one, not two, but three systems out in the Atlantic. We've got triple trouble out there. We've got a tropical storm, a tropical depression, and another tropical wave developing behind that one. You would think that it was the peak of hurricane season closer to August or September with this much action out in the Atlantic but it's still just the first few weeks of hurricane season. We're still in the month of June. So this is certainly unusual and not typical for this early in the hurricane season, but we have very warm, abnormally warm waters all across the Atlantic, well into the 80s. So that means that we have tropical systems brewing, forming, and getting stronger. Let's start off with Tropical Storm Brett getting very close to the Lesser Antilles. It is going to be likely pushing across Barbados over the next several hours, and it will bring with it some tropical storm conditions, tropical storm force winds, and also the potential for maybe three to six inches of rain. Here's what we have with Brett currently. It is up to 65 miles per hour. It did briefly get up to 70 miles per hour, but it currently is at 65 miles per hour with those maximum sustained winds. Movement is still fairly quickly to the west at 16 miles per hour. Pressure right at 1,002 millibars, and it is around 13.4 degrees north and 59.6 degrees west. This is the latest 4 p.m. advisor, and I want to zoom in and show you where we do have some of these tropical storm warnings. So notice the areas shaded in blue. That includes Barbados, Martinique, Guadeloupe, and also the St. Lucia area. All of those folks are under tropical storm warnings due to the fact that tropical storm Brett is going to roll right over these areas and produce that heavy rain that could lead to flooding and maybe some wind gusts maybe around 75, 80 miles per hour with the maximum sustained winds at 65 miles per hour. That means the gusts could be even stronger than that. So it will impact the Lesser Antilles. And then as we go into Friday afternoon and evening, it's going to push into the Eastern Caribbean. It's going to move south of Puerto Rico by Saturday. It's still a tropical storm, but it is getting a little bit weaker as it moves south of the Dominican Republic. But notice as it tries to creep into the Western Caribbean, it is kind of falling apart on Sunday. The forecast is for tropical storm Brett to completely dissipate over the next three days or so. So that means it will not get into the Gulf and it will not get anywhere close to Southeast Texas, so that is some good news. Here is the latest on our newly formed Tropical Depression 4. It now has winds of 35 miles per hour. Movement is to the west northwest at 14 miles per hour and pressure currently at 1,007 millibars. So this one is off to the south and east of Tropical Storm Brett out in the central Atlantic, and you can see that movement off to the west northwest. So this one is forecast to become stronger, a stronger tropical storm by Saturday afternoon with winds around 60 miles per hour. But after that, it's going to move into an area that's not quite as favorable for development. So it will gradually start to weaken, likely for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. In fact, by Tuesday, it's back down to a 35 mile per hour system. So definitely weakening as it would get closer to the east coast of the U.S. So I'm not concerned about tropical depression number four heading anywhere towards Houston as well. So that is more good news for us. Of course, we do have the additional tropical waves still way out in the Atlantic. We'll have to watch that one, but right now it does not have a high chance for development, so that is good news. But Tropical Depression 4, as you can see, will not be pushing into the Gulf. It is forecast to push off to the west northwest, so that may take it closer to the Bahamas and also closer to the Bermuda area if it makes more of a northeast turn. But overall, it does not appear to have a huge impact on any parts of the U.S. because it will be weakening as we go into early next week. But these systems are kind of thriving out there because we have such warm ocean waters out there. Waters in the Atlantic are very warm, unseasonably warm. We've got very warm sea surface temps as well in the Caribbean in the middle to upper 80s. And it's the same story in the Gulf. A lot of warm water to work with out there. So that's why these systems are rapidly developing and strengthening 
the good news though we don't have any action in the gulf of mexico so for this hurricane season so far even though we're just in the first few weeks we've already had two named storms we still have brett out there we had arlene and we could have cindy named with tropical depression four likely becoming cindy by tonight or tomorrow so we're closely tracking these systems and it looks like it will be still pretty busy at least for the next week or so with these systems continuing to develop Let's do a recap of what we were expecting for this hurricane season. Of course, with the CSU forecast, 15 named storms, the NOAA forecast call for 12 to 17 named storms, and an average season would call for 14 named storms. So far, we already have two, and we've still got several months to go in our hurricane season. So hopefully, it doesn't end up being a super busy season, but at this point, at the rate we're going, it could definitely be a fairly busy season with these storms developing and with that water temperature staying so warm. Like I said, we're still close to the beginning of hurricane season, still in the month of June. We still have to wait until August and September before traditionally things really start to get even more active. So we will be closely monitoring any activity that develops out there. But of course, when things are quiet, that's always a good time to think about your hurricane plan, thinking about if you have all of the supplies that you need to make sure that you're prepared. So I wanted to highlight today disaster supply kits. You need to make sure you have a disaster supply kit and also think about any food or water, non-perishable items, of course, that you would need to have stashed at your house just in case you could not evacuate or you weren't going to evacuate and you're going to ride it out. Make sure that you have the supplies that you need. It's also a great idea to keep your gas tank full, a little cash on hand if you have any important prescriptions, any medicine that you may need throughout the dur duration of the event and you're not able to leave your house. You need to make sure to have that as well and also uh, radio batteries phone chargers extra <laughs> phone chargers and things like that would always be great to have on hand as well so we've got the three systems that we're tracking a tropical storm tropical depression and a tropical wave and of course we'll continue to keep you updated but nothing that is close to threatening the houston area at this point but if that changes we will let you know but of course, make sure to have the Fox 26 weather app downloaded on your phone to get the latest on our tropical weather updates, our forecast cones, follow me feature, and any hurricane watches or warnings or tropical storm watches or warnings that may come out. Once again, I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. Have a great rest of your day and stay safe and keep cool out there.